Hello folks, in this video we're going to take a look inside the 2018 World Cup sticker book by Panini. Take a look at the contents, let's waste no more time, jump straight in and take a look. <laughs> So here we are folks with the 2018 FIFA World Cup uh, sticker album for the... So here we are folks with the FIFA World Cup in Russia in 2018 sticker album by Panini. So let's take a look inside the album and see what we've got. So first and foremost we can see a list of the, t of the countries participating on the left hand side. Maybe if I scoop that over there you can see it a little bit better. Uh, each with uh, page number so you can cut straight to the chase. If you're missing some stickers, there's a little bit of information you got there. Uh, obviously, these probably some little art stuff or whatever. Um, and we also have some stickers here. I'm going to start again. So here we are. So here we are, folks, with the 2018 FIFA World Cup in Russia sticker album from Penini, the real deal, folks. Uh, so let's crack it open and take a look. First and foremost, what you can see, I've got some stickers. They gave me some freebies. Let's take a look at those. Uh, flip it upside down. I've got Kendall Watson from Costa Rica, place for the Vancouver Whitecaps. Then we have Mendy Benashia, place for Juventus. Also Morocco. Jose Jimenez from Atletico Madrid and also Uruguay. Igor Akinfenwe, the number one goalkeeper for Russia and also for CSK Mosso. Alex Awobi, young, promising midfield attacking dynamo for Nigeria and also Arsenal. And William, Chelsea's midfield maestro and also plays for Brazil. Also on the left hand side you see shortcuts uh, for all the countries taking part broken down into their groups. Flip this over we have a list of winners of the current world uh, of the World Cup over the years. Germany current champions looking for their what one two three four their fifth world championship. Brazil already got five last time they won. It's quite a, quite a while ago 2002 seems uh, doesn't seem that long ago but uh, Argentina looking for their first World Cup since, where is it, 1986. Uh, then we move on to the next page and it shows you a list of all the matches on the left hand side with the dates, little markers there that you can keep up to date uh, with the scores. Then we have a little breakdown of a possible bracket for the uh, tournament. You fill that in as you go. Then we have a look at some of the, the stadiums and the cities taking part in the World Cup. You would collect them obviously as you go. A bit more uh, other bits and pieces. Not sure entirely what will go in here. Looks like a double bubble up here. Um, and it just shows you a clear indication of where the uh, cities are taking part in this World Cup. Then we kick on forward. Talks a little bit about digital sticker albums. I've not been familiar with that myself also. The opportunity to buy some tickets right here, right now. This is talking more on the next page about the digital side of this. Not too familiar myself. Never done this. Never really explored it, but I might do. Uh, but right now, I'm more interested about the actual physical stickers. And here we are with the first team, Russia. They come obviously into the tournament as hosts. Uh, they have uh, got their list of their fixtures on the right hand side. Key men, I would say, Fedor Smolov, Alan Sagov, and obviously I got Akin Fenway between the sticks. Uh, they've gone through a few managers actually uh, for this. I think it started off with Capello, but he got sacked. Uh, then we've got Saudi Arabia who came through qualifying, finishing in Group A, top of the pops, ahead of United Arab Emirates, and, and then they pushed on into the Round 3, finishing second behind Japan, ahead of Australia, and also ahead of Iraq. Not too sure about key players here, so if you know, whack a comment in the section below. Then we've got Egypt. Mo Salah has been on fire for his team in England. Uh, hopefully he will get some goals for Egypt. I think they could be also a, a bit of a dark horse in this tournament. I think Russia will go through and it's either between Uruguay and Egypt for the second spot. Uh, Egypt came through qualifying Group E winners ahead of uh, Uganda and even, uh, what's his name, uh, Asamoah Jans Ghana, which is unfortunate because I do like uh, uh, Ghana. Uh, Mohamed El is another key player. so. Key, they're going to be interesting to watch, see if they can take advantage of Mo Salah. Then we have Uruguay, who made a bit of a stir in recent tournaments with uh, this fella here, Luis Suarez. But they came through second in the South, Africa, South American qualifying phase, just behind Brazil, but ahead of Argentina and Colombia. Also key players to watch out, Diego Godin's the captain. Uh, we mentioned Suarez, Edison Cavani can score goals when he wants. So, plenty decent squad. Then we have a really, really old looking Portugal side who finished top of their pops on goal difference ahead of Switzerland. Um, like I said, very old side, but they do have Ronaldo. Nani's getting on a bit. Quaresma's getting on a bit. Pepe's getting on a bit. Bruno Alves is getting on a bit. 
So a really old side, this is probably the last tournament for probably half of these guys, if not maybe two thirds of the side. Uh, then, we, then we have Spain, in fact there's two sides, Spain and Portugal meet in one of the ties of the whole tournament uh, and the winner of that will go a long way to see who tops the group. Spain qualified as group winners ahead of Italy and Albania, Italy were forced to go through the playoffs but uh, they didn't make it. Uh, key players Iniesta still cracking, Sergio Busquets, Sergio Ramos and David De Gea. I think they lack up front though, but um, that's just my opinion. Then we have Morocco. Are they making up the numbers in this group? Pros possibly. I expect Portugal and Spain to come through. Uh, Morocco came through a tough, tough um, African qualifying phase, finishing ahead of Ivory Coast. Everyone expected Ivory Coast to come through, but they came through quite impressively actually, not losing one game. Uh, key players, Arabat perhaps. I'm just guessing though, I'm, I'm not familiar with them. Then we have the Islamic Republic of Iran, who came through qualifying top of Group D in the second round, ahead of the likes of Oman and India. And then in Group A in the third round phase, they also topped the group uh, ahead of Korea, that's the Republic of South Korea, uh, Syria, Uzbekistan, China and Qatar. They are managed by former Real Madrid manager, I don't remember his name, but he was also a Manchester United assistant under Fergie at some stage. This guy's played for Charlton at some phases of his career. I think he's in Belgium or Holland right now, but that's all my knowledge of Iran football. Then we have France, who came through top of Group A in the European qualifying phase. Very, very strong looking squad. I think a lot of these strikers will not make it. I think you're going to probably either lose Giroud, Lacazette or Dembele. I think my papi's going Martial and Griezmann will be there. Strong looking squad, good goalkeeper, should make it into the last eight, I would say, of the tournament. Uh, then we have Australia. Probably, I don't think they're going to squeeze through this one. It's going to be a tough order. I think they could battle for qualification. They came through a very, very long qualifying phase. I've initially, top of group uh, B in the second round of the Asian qualifying ahead of Jordan and uh, some other teams there, Bangladesh. Then they came through group three, only just though finishing third behind Japan and South. Uh, Saudi Arabia ahead of Iraq and the United Arab Emirates. Then they had to play Syria in a uh, a playoff, which they won. I think eventually 3-2 on aggregate. And again, they had to play Honduras in another playoff. Uh, key men: Aaron Moy is a superstar player. Watched him play live uh, Huddersfield against Blackburn one time. Marge Jednak, decent, and the aging but also cool Tim Cahill. Then we have Peru, dark horses here. They could upset a few people in this uh, in this group. They come here a little bit uh, unexpected, people not expecting much of them. They actually finished fifth in the South American group and then they had to take on New Zealand, which they won two nil in a playoff. Jefferson Fan Fan, it's a decent player. Paulo Huero, my knowledge of these are pretty slim, but if they can give Argentina and Brazil a run for their money, uh, then I expect them to give us a game. They drew with Argentina both times, 2-2 and 0-0. Then we have Denmark. These are my uh, second favorites for the group. Quality uh, bunch of boys, Andreas Christensen, Christian Eriksson. Not too sure about this fella, Lord Bettner. Uh, they came through second in Group E behind Poland. Uh, they had to go through a playoff, which they eventually won 5-1, courtesy of this man, and he's one of the best players on the planet right now, Christian Eriksson. So he could in, uh, guide them through. Argentina, they made it, but only just in the last game of the season. Uh, they scraped through, eventually winning, uh, coming in third place of the South American group. We all know about Lionel Messi, but look at this strike force. You've got Icardi, Di Dybala, Aguero, Iguain, probably butchered all those names. They can all score goals and they would all walk into every other international team in this World Cup. I expect these guys to top the group. Uh, they do have some concerns about defence, as they always do, but um, yeah, they should come through as group winners. Then we have Iceland, World Cup debutants. Iceland came through actually top of their group ahead of Croatia, who are in this group, and they played twice and they won one and lost one against Croatia. Key man here is Gilfrey Sigurdsson, now on Everton, and Johan Goodmanson, who has now gained an extra finger because he plays for Burnley. Then we go and take on, let's take a look at Croatia. Just mentioned then they finished second behind Iceland in Group I of the European qualifying phase. They then had to beat Croatia, sorry, they had to beat Greece 4-1 on aggregate. Key men here, Ivan Rakitic, Luka Modric, Ivan Perisic, my main man Nikola Kalinic, formerly Rovers, now playing for AC Milan. Then we have Nigeria, topped uh, Group B in the third round, African qualifying phase ahead of Cameroon and Algeria and also Sambia, so strong group there. Kelchi Ichinaccio, Alex Iwobi, 
uh, Victor Moses, Ahmed Musa, strong attacking side of the field for Nigeria, question marks about their defence. Then we have Brazil, one of the favourites. Breeze through qualifying, 10 points clear of Uruguay. Um, again, strong in this side of the field. In fact, no, they're probably pretty strong overall. Good goalkeeper and Allison. finally. They got rid of Julio Cesar from the last World Cup. Danny Alves might be getting on a bit. Diego Silva, not really. Uh, but then we have a good bunch of players that are strong. Pal Palinho, despite playing in China, got moved to Barcelona. And now he's back in the Brazilian uh, side. J Neymar, question marks around him. Uh, is he going to be fit enough? Philippe Coutinho for Barcelona also in the mix. Switzerland, these are another dark horses for me. Um, topped, no they didn't, they finished second behind Portugal in Group B in the European qualifying phase. Eventually beating Northern Ireland. Uh, I just, they're just, I think they just do enough to Switzerland for this second qualifying group out of this uh, Group E of the World Cup. Real Imbola from Schalke. Uh, Shakiri's decent. Granite Exaka, they got a good midfield, maybe lacking a little bit up front. Costa Rica, another another World Cup for them after impressing in Russia, in Brazil, finishing in the quarterfinals. They came through Group B, 